Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for attending at 6.30 p.m. I'd like to call this special meeting of the Watertown Board of Education to order and ask that we please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Uh, we do not have a recording clerk this evening, so I will call the roll. Um, please state your name as you hear it. Don Orsini. Here. Jim Gambardella. Here. Josephine Cavallarosa. Here. Thomas Lambert. Here. Ray Nardella. Eric Berthel. Here. Janelle Wilk. Leslie Crotty. Here. And Guy Bazaar. We'll move on to item D, our first round of public participation this evening. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board this evening? Is there anyone who wishes to address the board this evening? If not, we'll close our first round of public participation and move on to item E, committee reports. The first would be from Mr. Nardella, who's not with us this evening. The second would be from Mr. Berthel. Any report this evening from Policy and Labor? No report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And any report this evening, Mr. Berthel, from Budget and Finance? Uh, none. Thanks. Mr. Lambert, any report this evening from facilities PBC operations? No report at this time. Thank you. And again, um, in the absence of Mr. Nardella, we will not have a report this evening from governance and community engagement. Nor will we have communications to report under item F. We will move on to item G. I'd like to ask okay. you to make the motions. The first would be the minutes of the Watertown Board of Education regular meeting of June 23rd, 2014. Are there any corrections to those minutes? If not, is there a motion to approve them? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve of the minutes of the regular Board of Education meeting of June 23rd, 2014 as submitted. Thank you for the motion, Mr. Berthel. Is there a second? Second. Thank you for the second, Mr. Lambert. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. We move on to item two of minutes, the minutes of the special Board of Education meeting of June 9th, 2014. Are there any corrections to those minutes? If not, is there a motion to approve those minutes as submitted? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve of the, the minutes of the special Board of Education meeting of June 9th, 2014 as submitted. Thank you for the motion, Mr. Berthel. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? The motion passes. And with that, it's my pleasure <laughs> to turn over the meeting at this point to Dr. Bridget Carnamola for her very first superintendent's recommendations. Mm -hmm. and report. Thank you, Mr. Pizzano. Um, before I move on to the budget recommendations, I just want, there's one area, um, a couple of areas I need to draw attention to on the appointments, even though they're information only. Um, one being uh, under C, we have reappointed Mr. Ramos Sanicola to the position of facilities manager to Watertown Public Schools. We made an administrative decision to do that because of budget constraints and the, uh, my desire to keep some continuity in the district by maintaining our current facilities manager rather than putting in a new position of director of operations. Um, likewise, we have some additional information only including the resignation of Ms. Rommel, which we are, we are working on this evening. And with that, I will move on to the budget reduction presentation. So I'd like to start off by saying, as you know, um, tonight the set of 
budget cuts I'll be recommending are actually the second cuts to the budget. The, this is uh, just a brief overview of the $850,000 worth of cuts that were made following the first referendum. And then as we all know, on June 30th, the town council met and requested that we reduce our budget by an additional $250,000. Um, I'd like to start by saying that the budget cuts you'll see this evening were made um, after painstaking reviews of the current budget and that as an administrative team at Munson House, our number one goal was to attempt to impact our students in Watertown the least. Um, that said, we went line by line looking for ways to reduce this budget, $250,000, without doing much damage, if you will, to our programs and to our academic offerings for students. Firstly, um, right after I came on the job, we had an additional two notices for retirements. We will fill both of those positions. One is a kindergarten teacher, one is a special education teacher. So this is just a net savings um, between hiring newer people at the lower end of the pay scale versus retirements in the upper end of the pay scale. As I mentioned already, I made a decision to cut out the anticipated director of operations position. There was another line item that we determined was related to the CNA program, which had been cut in the last go-round budgets. This is, um, we, we have a line in the budget to publish ads, obviously. Um, we reduced that in part because we are utilizing a lot of online measures now for posting jobs at CEA.com for teachers, for example, CTRE, JobSpot. There are still um, things that need to be posted in the newspapers, and we still have a, uh, an, an amount of money in the budget to do that, but we are reducing the amount that we publish in the newspapers. Um, this may seem a little bit archaic, but it, we, we're still putting some of uh, our items onto microfilm, so we've made a decision to stop that prep uh, process and save ourselves $3,200. And then we have a couple that we just cut across the board at schools, the first being travel and conferences. We took 50% from each school. We took 10% from instructional supplies from each school. We took 10% from the general instructional profess, uh, professional services at each school. And I should mention that the primary thing that budget line item pays for is interns um, from the teaching programs who come and work for a year with us. Not that we do not um, benefit greatly from having the interns, because we certainly do, but. This is a good time to stop and say that part of how we came to these cuts was looking closely at the money that we'd spent in each of these line items over the past couple of years. And so in the places that we have chosen to reduce the budget, there are places where we had money that was not fully spent on some of the items um, that it was originally intended for. So for example, we did not turn any interns away last year, but there were a limited number who applied for the positions. It looks the same way coming in this year, so that made it easier to take some of that money. This, obviously, um, the freshman sports is the place where, when I say that we attempted to impact our students and the programs the least, I would say that this is the piece that um, could be construed as what would impact students the most. However, um, as you know, the, the original intention had been to cut middle school sports in their entirety, and I was pretty adamant that we not do that because I feel that sports in grades six to eight are a, a way that students can become invested in the culture of the school and have an outlet and to take them away from them entirely. Uh, I was against doing them except at all other costs. So again, as you see, going line item by line item, I was looking for the $80,000 that cutting sports in six to eight would have gotten me. So I spoke with our previous athletic director, 
now assistant principal at the high school, Mr. Medic. And I asked him to talk to me about what it would look like if I cut freshman sports. What would that actually mean for our students? And I will show you that on the next slide. A couple more line items here. Um, the alternative school coordinator, we did not need any longer, in part because while still at the high school, while I was still at the high school, we instituted the Pathways program, and that has taken care of some of our um, credit remediation. Our system-wide PD coordinator, uh, we went back and forth quite a bit about this. However, this is a new, this was an added position into the last stipend of positions. And at the time that we added it, we did not have Ms. Parlato with us, who is the Director of Curriculum Instruction and Professional <coughs> Development. And so she and I had conversations about how we might still accomplish our PD needs without the coordinator. Likewise, uh, we have a district-wide computer education coordinator. That was something that was also recently put in and something that we're, we are going to work around and find ways to still coordinate our computer education throughout the district, the, the people that work in the buildings, Ms. Parlato, uh, Ms. Rochester, and myself. And unfortunately, there were two positions that I eliminated. One being the computer paraprofessionals, is a category four paraprofessional here at Swift. And one being the library clerk at Watertown High School. And take a moment and explain the rationale for why it was the, the two of them. Um, at Swift Middle School and at Watertown High School, we are fortunate enough to have library media specialists. They are the two schools in the district where we do have library media specialists to run the library. Also in both of those schools, in conjunction with a library media specialist, we had a library clerk and a computer paraprofessional. All of the schools were not fortunate enough to have all three of those individuals, but we were at the high school and at the middle school. So having just come from the high school myself, I was able to ascertain how that might affect the high school, more so than the brand new principal. And I spoke at length with Mrs. Lurz about how that might look here at Swift and we spoke with the library media specialists and made a decision that the library, not that it's a great choice, you have to make difficult choices in cutting $250,000, but that if we were able to pick two places where we might still be able to get the work done with the individuals that we had, these were two of those places. So this will leave Watertown High School with a library media specialist and a computer paraprofessional, and vice versa, it will leave Swift with a library media specialist and a library clerk. And their roles are, are similar in both of the schools, the library clerk and the computer paraprofessional. So that actually brought us a little bit over what we were asked to cut, 250,962. But in the uh, vein of being transparent, we're showing that it's a little bit over. So back to freshman sports. Generally speaking, the majority of our athletes in ninth grade who would play freshman sports also participated in JV sports. And so therefore, the majority of our athletes at the high school will still be able to play sports by playing JV instead of freshman sports. We actually had some difficulty with the freshman teams at the high school in <coughs> scheduling contests due to limited freshman team competition because at a lot of other high schools, we don't have freshman teams, we have JV and varsity. So at times it actually became difficult for our freshman teams to play. And as you see, we can canceled a number of contests over the past couple of years because we had an inadequate number of players. Um, likewise, you see there are games that are not made up due to weather. The one exception that I need to leave in, and it still saves us the money on freshman sports, the $27,000, is freshman football. And the, the reason for that is because, as you can see, without me reading word for word, that is a little bit different of a sport in the sense that we can have senior athletes playing JV var football, for example. So we, you know, at times we'll have 18 year old young men playing JV football alongside of Joey, 14-year-old uh, 14, 14 
young men student athletes who have not gotten typically to the size that a senior would be. Um, so, because in football, it, at the high school, it truly is based, uh, there, are a number, there are so many students that play that whether you play JV or varsity is completely based on skill. It's not about age. And so I'd be putting our uh, freshman athletes that want to play football in a dangerous position, especially football being a, a fairly uh, difficult sport as it is for injuries and so on. I think I would be negligent if I cut freshman football and asked those freshmen interested to play JV. And we were able to do it without cutting that anyway. So we will leave freshman football. Um, one of the things that I wanted to address this evening because it came up at the town council meeting when we were given the charge to cut the $250,000 one of the things we were asked to do was to try to make the cuts in administration rather than other things that might affect students. And as you can see by what I went through, for the most part, I would argue that a lot of those are administrative type costs. But I wanted to speak specifically to the idea of the administration. Um, and I did look at it. And I will tell you some of what my rationale for not cutting anything additional with administrators either at the district or at the school level is. Um, so I, I have to bring you into some of the types of work that our administrators are, are doing these days in Watertown. As you can see, in the past year, our administrators conducted 2,350 classroom observations. That's one year. The minimum amount of time that was required for a classroom observation was 20 minutes. So these are, they're a combination of teacher meetings and teacher observations because there are meetings associated with conducting the observations many times, pre-conferences, post-conferences, for formal observations, for example, meeting with teachers about um, their goals for the year and the progress toward those goals, otherwise known as SLOs. And we certainly were always doing observations, but under the new state guidelines for teacher evaluation, as you can see, they have certainly been ramped up and this will not be changing anytime soon. In addition, there needs to be an administrator at every PPT that happens in the town of Watertown. And last year, we were at 1,016 <coughs> PPTs for students. I would take a good estimate and say that the average PPT is about an hour. Sometimes they're much longer than that. Sometimes they can be a little bit shorter, but I would say right around an hour. So there's another thousand plus hours that were spent on PPTs by administrators. Of course, they do the discipline which we are all used to knowing that administrators do and the day-to-day -day operations. So when you look at the amount of work that the administrators that we do have completed, I think you can see how difficult it would be. Frank, frankly, it was extremely difficult to do what you just saw. That, and, and I can speak from experience, because as you know, I just came from doing that work. And doing the administrative work to the degree that we do it meant all day, every day, nights, weekends. That's the only way that all of that and the paperwork associated with it gets done. So reducing the number of administrators at this point is, is not an option. Likewise, we have already been through some administrative cuts. When I looked back, again, I, as I mentioned, I went through previous budgets and to see where we had been as I projected where to go forward. And we have already eliminated three administrative positions. We eliminated a direct, an assistant superintendent, a director of operations, and an assistant principal here at Gordon Swift Middle School. Now again, in, in, in fairness and in transparency, we do ha now have a director of curriculum and instruction that we did not have when we eliminated this assistant superintendent. However, that position, we, we, we lost another and split the special ed uh, position. Likewise, as far as the dollar amount we spend on administrative salaries, I thought it might be helpful even for me to understand where we compare 
as I was looking at the budget. So we put together a chart that shows some comparisons between um, us and some nearby places. And if you look at the chart, here is our DERG. There we are at the bottom. The maximum administrator salary for Watertown is at the bottom. And you see we're talking about, again, if we want to compare apples to apples, for example, I wouldn't compare us to Southington, which is near the top. There are 11 schools in Southington. There are five here in Watertown. But we can compare apples to apples. Colchester has four schools. Ledyard has six. Um, people above us up until Wallingford have four or six. Um, up near the top, we have Bethel at five, Brantford at five, Berlin at five, Rocky Hill at five. So just to give an idea of where we fall on the administrative salary continuum. Another way to look at it is other schools in our DERG and the ratio between students and administrators. And you see here where we fall. We have 3,024 students. We have a 216 to one ratio for our administrators. This now, I often hear the argument that we can be compared to some of the towns in our DERG and yet we can't. So I said, let's look at surrounding towns that some we may consider more comparable from a practical standpoint. And again, you can see we are three from the bottom in our salaries compared to the towns surrounding us, Litchfield and Thomaston falling below us. So in summary, since the first budget that we proposed, we are now at $1.1 million in cuts. We have cut 200 uh, expected new computers that were to replace aging computers. We had four teacher retirements after that initial round of cuts. We eliminated some much needed positions that had been in the new budget, including a social worker and a school psychologist for the district. We um, had originally taken out the hockey program, and as you know, we have worked around that at this point with the um, ice time and the fee structure. We've worked that out with our booster club thankfully, to be able to continue hockey at the high school. Um, our CNN program, which certainly was a loss, and if there were something I could have done to have saved that when I got here, I had every plan to do that, frankly. Um, but the additional 250,000 cuts made that a definitive reality that I could not save it when, when I came. Um, we're going to bring in some money for activity fees. We're saving a little bit and some new hires. Another couple of retirements. We've saved some money in the new administrators that we've hired. Again, net savings by them being at the lower end of the pay scale. And we are saving some money in long-term substitute savings due to some changes in policy at the board level. So just to review again the, the cuts that I am proposing to the board this evening, 76,489 in retirement savings. 11,294 by eliminating the proposed director of operations position, $8,900 for CNA tests and supplies, 5,000 for the Board of Ed ads, 3,200 in microfilm, 4,907 in travel and conferences, 17,054 in instructional supplies, 8,160 in professional services, 27,000 from freshman sports, of course, excluding the football program, $2,777 alternative school coordinator, some system-wide coordinators that were new stipend positions for computer ed and PD, and the elimination of two positions in the district, two, one library clerk and one computer <coughs> pair. And that brings us to our 250000 Do the board members have any questions for me about any of that? Questions from the board? 
Yes. When it comes to the freshman sports, where are the savings actually realized? Where, where, what's being cut that's the money spent on? Um, coaches, transportation, that's the majority of it. I, I'd like to point out there, again, it was um, a, a tad bit easier to do because we had a number of freshman uh, coaching positions that were vacant at this point. So um, there, there are a couple of folks who are freshman coaches with us that you know, we will unfortunately lose coaching some freshman sports, but we had a number of positions that have yet been filled, so we're not affecting as many people that coach for us. Other comments, questions from board members? Please, Leslie. I know that you hit the ground running clearly with a huge task at hand. Um, having little time to digest your suggestions, I can say um, honestly how appreciative I am, uh, how much work that must have taken you and the rest of your team and school administrators to try to find those dollars. That is evident. Um, some of the individual items, I'm sure some people might have some questions over after they have some time to digest it, but I just I would like to thank you for working that hard right off the bat to try to find this money for us. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hoffman, while we wrap up, I think we're done with the uh, projector. Dr. Carnival, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Could, could you help clear clear that out, Dave? Um, yeah, Bridget, I, and I would like to add my thanks and appreciation to you, to Jill, to Janet, to the building administrators. The administrators who are here this evening um, really can't imagine what this exercise would have been like if the superintendent and business manager who came on board on July 1st had no experience in our district. This presentation tonight really reflects your ground level knowledge of what goes on in a building and it was much more uh, realistic as a result and I think to be um, it managed to be uh, to meet the goals that we were given the direction we were given by the town council but at the same time truly does have minimal impact on students in, in our district. Uh, I also appreciate the extra uh, attention you, you took in reviewing the, uh, <coughs> the the guidance to look at the administrative headcount and what you validated was that we do have one of the highest ratios of students per administrator uh, in, in our DERG uh, and that continues to sort of validate would uh, groups like the Yankee Institute for Public Policy continue to find that Watertown is one of the most efficient districts, not just in our DERG, but in the state, at graduating the highest percentage of students for the lowest amount of taxpayer dollars. So it would certainly be consistent to have a rating like that from the Yankee Institute and the results you found in looking at administrative um, costs. Um, any additions you'd like to, other comments you'd like to make as you wrap up your report? No, I, I would again just say that it, it, of course it was difficult work, um, but it was worthwhile work for us because, number one, we know our budget inside and out at this point. Um, number two, we have a complete history of the budget, probably for at least for the past five years that we have a very good understanding of. And number three, I, I believe that we we're able to make the $250,000 worth of cuts that required of us with as little impact as possible upon mm -hmm. our students in Watertown. And um, it, while a painstaking process to go line by line in the way that we did, um, I believe it was worthwhile to spend the time doing it so that we can have the programs, the teachers, and the services that we need for students. Thank you again, Bridget. Uh, with that, we'll move on to item I, report from the chairman. Uh, you know, one of the first songs I remember hearing as a child was Nat King Cole's Lazy, Hazy, Crazy Days of Summer. I don't know if any of you will admit to, to remembering that one as well. It's a fun song that sort of celebrates picnics and drive-ins and going to the beach. Uh, but for anyone involved in raising or educating children, you know it's a lie. Sure, when, when dew points are high, like nearly as high as the temperatures these days can be hazy, uh, and these days can be 
crazy, but they're anything but lazy right now. Uh, they can be exciting and full of good things like they are in a, in, as we can report tonight. For instance, tonight is our first Board of Education meeting with Dr. Bridget Carnamola seated to my left in the superintendent's chair. It's a night we've been looking forward to for the past three months. And it's an absolute joy to officially welcome her tonight as our superintendent. You know, <clears throat> Bridget, that this board realizes that our children, our staff, and our parents are in great hands with you leading our public schools. And we're here to support you, the board. We're here to support you every step of the way. So would you all join me, please, in warmly welcoming Bridget. <laughs> Also, the, the very first board meeting for several others holding new positions in the district, though not all of them are new to the district themselves. That's a great position to be in. As we noted earlier, experience really counts, particularly in important matters like budgets. It means that individuals with experience in our district who know our kids and our parents can do even more for them now that they're in positions of greater responsibility. So tonight, we want to officially welcome and congratulate Jill Brown. Our former <laughs> she became our business manager last week. We also welcome Roberto Medic, previously our athletic director at the high school, and Tom Hogreef, who here was previously a science teacher and interim assistant principal at Swift, as they now become assistant principals at the high school. And while Paul Jones <clears throat> joins us as our new high school principal from out of town, he immersed himself in our district even before he officially joined us on July 1st. He's hit the ground running, getting to know his staff, his building, his programs, his operations, and it's just a joy to be able to refer to him now as Principal Jones. You know, we often resist, I'm guilty of this, and resent the changes that occur in our lives. I've certainly been one who much prefers the familiar and the stable. But it's dawned on me a little too slowly over the years that change is indeed inevitable. And what matters most is what you make of it. Changes certainly bring uncertainty, and that can make us uncomfortable, but they bring opportunity as well. And I, for one, have complete confidence that Bridget, Jill, Roberto, Tom, and Paul will make the most of their new opportunities, and that for our children, for our parents, and our staff, a change for the better is about to unfold in Watertown. On a final note, our next regular Board of Education meeting seems pretty far off. It's not until Monday, August 25th. Between now and then, however, is a critical milestone for our town. We want to remind everyone to head to the polls on Tuesday, August the 5th, as we discussed just a few moments ago. There have been so many reductions in our programs, in our activities, and now our staff after two referendums. Well, let's make August 5th then, the date we put an end to making further cuts, and the day we start moving our district for the forward and in a uh, positive way again. That concludes the report from the chairman. We'll move on to item J, action items, adoption of items to be approved by consent. Item one, consideration of the approval of the change in names on the Watertown Public Schools Child Nutrition Program account. Is there a motion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I move that the board approve of the change in names on the Watertown Public Schools Child Nutrition Program account to add Dr. B. Heston Carnamola, Superintendent of Schools, and Jill Brown, Business Manager, effective July 17, 2014. Thank you for the motion, Ms. Wilk. Is there a second? Second. Thank you for the second, Mr. Berthel. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? And the motion passes. Now, move on to item two, consideration of the transfer of Kathleen Scully to the position of principal at Judson Elementary School. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve of the transfer of Mrs. Kathleen Scully from her current position as principal of John Trumbull Primary School to the position of principal at Judson Elementary School, effective July 29, 2014, on step four of the WAA agreement at an annual salary of $115,131. Thank you for the motion, Mr. Berthel. Is there a second? Yes, I second the motion. Thank you, Ms. Cavalla Rosa. Any discussion? Well, 
I will say that on behalf of the hundreds of the children at, at Judson Elementary School, uh, I, I look forward to voting in favor of this transfer this evening. Uh, these kids are just going to be thrilled to be reunited with their principal, and we, we look forward to that. So if there is no other discussion, we'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Congratulations. <laughs> With that, we'll move on to item K, future agenda items, board members' comments. Do any board members have any comments they wish to make at this time or agenda items they'd like to propose for the future? Yes, Mr. Lambert. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd, like, I'd just like to discuss, uh, you know, people in the audience sometimes sit there and wonder why our budget goes up every year and uh, why we have to cut needed programs and services in order to meet the council's requested uh, cuts. Well. There's such a thing as binding arbitration that sets the stage for bargaining unit uh, considerations for salaries, benefits, and fixed costs, and everything that goes up every year, inclu including transportation, heating, and cooling, and, and now electricity costs are going to probably skyrocket. So therefore, our budget goes up by a large amount every year, even if we did nothing, even if we stayed with programs and services exactly the same. Our budget goes up every year because of those reasons. If we don't bargain uh, for a two percent, a two to three percent increase every year in our uh, bargaining units, uh, we go to bi binding arbitration. Now, not only do we lose, we have to pay lawyers' fees. So we're in a catch-22 situation. Naturally, we want to bring our bargaining units along and give them raises every year, but there's a cost for that, and the cost is what we're looking at tonight. I just want to reiterate that point. It's an important point. Thank you for mentioning it. We have over $1.6 million in increases to the fixed cost of our budget, uh, negotiated wage increases, uh, and, and more particularly in the area of increased health claims that we can anticipate for the year, and special ed costs. So just standing still, districts face um, significant increases in operating costs every year and always have to be looking at ways to save to offset that. Uh, so it, it is a constant battle. Thank you for uh, calling attention to that. Do other board members have comments or proposed agenda items they'd like to suggest at this time? Mr. Racine? Yes. I would like to uh, thank Dr. Carmanola for the budget cuts and where she limited the impact on direct students. I really do appreciate the fact that she took the time to go through the budget and really look at all line items and really take that. And it is it's a painstaking I've done budgets, I understand it's not easy to go through each line item and really look at all the impacts that they do. And I have to say, I really do thank you and I really appreciate it. It's a great way of starting out. So, thank you. Well, thank you, Don, for that comment. Uh, do board members have any additional comments? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Berthel. Uh, Dr. Carnamola, thank you as well for the uh, good and complete review and discussion on the additional cuts. One of the things that stood out to me, and, and there's a number of teachers in the room uh, this evening, uh, and I know from personal conversations with many of you that you often dip into your own pockets uh, throughout the course of the school year to uh, satisfy the needs in your classroom, whether it's uh, you know additional dry erase markers, uh, whatever it is that you need to give your students the best experience. And uh, I just would like to acknowledge the fact that we are taking another $17,000 out of the um, uh, the budget that will go to the taxpayers uh, and essentially probably taking another seventeen thousand dollars out of your pocket instead uh, so I appreciate the fact that you do that every year and that you continue to do that and you do it because you uh, care about uh, what's going on in our schools and care for our children so thank you Mr. Chairman. Any additional comments from board members? Uh, just one other yes, thing I'd like Mr. Chairman through you. Sure. Uh, you know uh, also I, I think when an experienced teacher retires, there's a loss there. You know, we, we do save money on salaries, but we don't save money on the experience that they brought to the classroom. Um, that's a real loss for the district. And uh, when a, an experienced teacher leaves, especially a successful one like a lot of ours are, um, there's, there's a loss in the district. So I do want to recognize that, that Sure, we might save money with a new teacher coming in, but we did lose that that gain that we made with that experienced teacher. So 
I, I, I do want to note that in, in a minute. You're, thank you. It's a great point. <clears throat> you can always succeed a teacher, but you can't replace them. Uh, and we have great evidence of that, particularly this year, among our retiring teachers. Are there further comments? If not, we'll move on to item L, our second round of public participation for the evening. <coughs> Is there anyone who wishes to address the board? Is there anyone who wishes to address the board? If not, we'll close our second round of public participation and ask for a motion to move into executive session. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I move that the board enter in, into executive session for the purpose of interviewing and discussing an applicant for the position of principal at Polk Elementary School. Attending the executive session will be Don Arsini, James Gambardella, Josephine Cavallo Rosa, Guy Bozzano, Eric Berthel, Leslie Crotty, Janelle Wilk, Dr. Bridget Carnamola, the candidate for position of principal, and myself, Tom Lambert. Thank you for the motion, Mr. Lambert. Is there a second? Second. Thank you for the second, Mr. Berthel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions. We are now in executive session. Uh, those whose names were not mentioned, I need to ask you to 